Croito is channeled by fluid. Yes, we're back to the north again with some more from Dawn Chorus. I don't have too much to say about this, so let's just get back into where we left things last time. You can finally find out who was playing the piano. And I might have an idea who's sitting behind the piano. As we walk towards the common room, room leading the way, the music gets louder. I don't know that song. The playing style reminds me of a certain wolf I know. Walking into the common space, I see it's indeed Miko sitting behind the piano. He notices entering the room and stops playing, turning in our direction. Why did you stop playing? Hello. Oh, hello there. Well, I had no idea you could play piano too, Miko. That's right, he played piano and was quite good at it. I remember staying with him after classes and listening to play on the school piano, back when we were in middle school. Well, knowing your way around the keyboard helps a lot with composing. I actually started with the piano and switched to electronic instruments later. I heard someone playing the piano when you came to listen. I hope you don't mind an audience. I don't, although don't expect too much from me. I haven't played the real acoustic thing in a long time. He touches the keyboard with such affection that for a moment I can't help but feel envious of it. Um, so would you like me to play something? Ah, uh, sure. Hmm, maybe this one? Miko turns towards the piano and lifts both his canine paws, wiggling his fingers for a moment before putting them down on the keyboard. Everyone goes silent in an instant, even only the crackling from the fireplace resounding in the room. Miko begins playing the piece, soft piano notes reverberating around the room. He strokes the keys gently, but with confidence. The three of us sit in silence, not wanting to distract him, but also enchanted by the music. I don't think he'd notice anything anyway, completely engrossed in playing. There's a genuine smile on his muscle, and he closes his eyes from time to time, his tail swaying from side to side with the rhythm of the piece. It's like he's playing with his whole body, not just his paws. The piece he's playing is delicate and calm like a meadow brushed by a gentle autumn breeze. It makes me feel like I'm floating above the ground or being carried away by a gentle stream. It's touching something deep within me that I haven't felt for a long time. His paws move elegantly in wide swipes across the keys. It takes some effort and he has to slow down in some parts, but from the look on his snout it's clear that he's having a lot of fun. He looks really happy when he plays. Yeah, I remember that from times we were in middle school together. The only times when he looked genuinely happy was when he was playing an instrument. Right now, in his smile I can see the boy he was back then, getting lost in music and forgetting about the world around him. Suddenly I hear steps somewhere behind me. Turning around I see Torolf entering the room, holding a banana in his paw. He raises at the paw to greet us, but doesn't say anything. Instead, he walks up to the free armchair and sits down quietly, listening to Miko playing. His steps feel deliberate and balanced. I hadn't noticed it before, but he walks in a really elegant way. Meanwhile, Miko finishes playing the piece. Well, that was really nice, Miko. Miko turns towards him, surprised. Hi, did we meet before? I believe not. Well, they mentioned you in conversation, though. I know you're Arvo's friend. My name is Torolf. A pleasure to meet you. A pleasure for me as well. That was something, Miko. Oh, thanks. You know, you're always saying that only out of courtesy. I can't help but envy him. I myself struggled with playing anything on the piano, and there wasn't any fun in it for me. When I was listening to him play, I always felt inadequate. He started a bit earlier than me, and that was enough to discourage me. 
Miku used to tell me I just lacked the resolve to push through the first phase when playing anything is a huge effort, but for me it seemed like I'd never get out of this phase. The truth is I never applied myself while Miko kept practicing and practicing. Now he's better than I'll ever be. I know, that was really great. Why did you learn to play like that? Well, we had music lessons in school like everyone in Finland. We were playing mostly stringed and wind instruments, but we had the basics of piano. I spent a lot of time playing piano by myself too, though. Oh, something you can play too, Arvo. Um, not really. I had music lessons as well, but I was never good at it. Maybe you remember something from them, though? Maybe a few melodies, that's all. Would you like to play too? Oh, I don't know. I haven't played in a long time, and I was never good to begin with. Oh, come on, I'm sure you're better than you think. We won't make fun of you, don't worry. Oh, don't worry, written all over his face. I don't know if it's a good idea, Rune. I... I might try. I don't know what I'm doing, but it's always so hard for me to refuse when others ask me politely. The excited look on Rune's face for sure played a big role here. I wouldn't want to let him down. Even though I know in the end I inevitably will. Miko stands up from the piano and moves on to the closest armchair. I reluctantly walk over and sit down in front of the instrument. Resting my paws on the keyboard, I notice they're shaking. What should I even play? I try and think of any track I was ever learning. Hmm, there is one that's fairly easy to play, and I think I remember it. I played a scale in which I think the track was composed, just to make sure that I remember it correctly. I don't know why among all the ones I've tried to learn this one stuck with me. I haven't listened to it in a long while. Okay, I don't really know what I'm waiting for. Not without some hesitation. I play the first note of the track and then the rest of the chord. The weight of the keys feels surprisingly familiar. The chord sounds nice and sweet. I forgot how nice it feels to play. I still feel everyone's eyes on my back though. Okay, focus. You just need to go through the piece and not make any obvious mistakes. Desynchronizing left and right paw is just as hard as I remember. People often don't realize that and think that playing slow piano piece is easy, but that's definitely not true. I feel like I'm writing an exam I've got to study for. Okay, that's all I remember. I turn around to face the rest and see them all looking straight at me. See, that wasn't bad. Yeah, sure. Arvo? Hey, I really mean it. Cheer up, you're lucky you're going to cry. That oh, was cool, Arvo. It really gave me chills. I really love Dick Craft music. I'm glad you played that one. Uh, Bjorn. Miko gives him a disappointed look and shakes his head. Okay, that's quite funny. Well, I was wrong. That's not Dick Craft music. That's a masterpiece from the 19th century. Oh, I'm not gonna lie, I was sure that was Norway from the Digcraft soundtrack. I haven't played the game in quite a while now, though. I always loved the music from it, it evokes so many memories, though. I'm glad to see the time I spent teaching you don't go to waste, though, Arvo. Oh, right. That's why this piece stuck with me. It's when Miko himself taught me. Frankly, I surprised even myself. Although that wasn't the best performance of this piece, to put it lightly. It's not like I remembered much of it anyway. Well, as long as I didn't play for a long time, that's really impressive, Arvo. You're really kind, all of you. I stand up from the piano and walk back to the sofa. My legs feel all wobbly under me, but I try to look calm and composed. I can't help but let out a big sigh of relief when I sit back down, leaning forward and hiding my snout on my open paws. Rune gets up and walks up to me, patting me on my back reassuringly. He did well, Arvo, don't worry. I don't think about piano, but I could teach you some basics of the guitar later if you'd like. 
Actually, I wonder how does piano relate to guitar if knowing how to play one helps with the other? Miko, can you play the guitar too? Oh, it's what I learned at primary school. It's so long ago, there's no point in even mentioning it. I remember maybe one song. That was an easy one by Neutral Minor Hotel. Oh yeah, of course, you mean the Nesteria plane over the sea. That one exactly, yeah. Oh, it's a classic. Oh, I don't think I've ever heard of it. Oh, it's not the kind of music you look for. It's the music that finds you. Anyway, you'll be able to help me much then. I'm afraid not. I just want me to teach you to play piano. Oh, maybe someday. I've a bit too much on my paws lately. But thank you for the offer anyway. Would you mind playing some more, Miko? I don't remember the last time I heard someone play piano live. I don't think I've ever attended any piano concert. It feels different than listening to recordings. I can't really say what it is exactly, but it just feels so much more alive and magical. I know a few more pieces. And we have time. As we sat together listening to Miko play, day slowly turned into night. Leaning on beyond, through the window, observed the last minutes of the evening sun, painting the sky red and orange. Soon after the clouds started to give way to a clear, silky smooth sky, slowly fading into black. So many things happened today already. The afternoon is over, but the memories of it will stay with me forever. Things end so fast here up north during winter. I don't feel tired at all, quite the contrary. I'm full of energy, but it's already dark outside. Above me, the stars look like small pebbles scattered across the night sky. Here, far away from the city and its polluting lights, they shine so much brighter. There's even the subtle band of light that forms the Milky Way slightly visible. It's a very cliche thing to think, but it's mind-blowing to think how big they actually are. So big and so distant. Impressive, isn't it? We stayed in the common space for more than an hour, first listening to Miko's play and then just talking together. At the end, we were joined by Lake and Jürgen, who treated everyone with the chocolate they brought with them. It's almost time for the stargazing to begin, so we hurried outside onto the terrace. Here we found we had the students already waiting, and several telescopes lined up at the edge of the terrace. A nice guy here certainly is something. Next to the entrance stands Devon, together with a professor I'm not familiar with. He's a burly badger, probably in his late 40s or 50s, looking rather friendly and approachable. Uh, good evening, Professor. Uh, good evening, Lake. And hello there, Jürgen. Good evening, Professor. I hope you're well. I'm good, I'm good, thank you. Well, Arvo, don't you have anything warm in that sweater? I do, of course I do. Only it's back in my room. Oh, yeah, right, I should have thought about that before. Wait oh, here just a moment. Oh, come back inside with me. I nod and go after him back into the guest house. Ah, it's so warm here. I'm glad he noticed. Knowing me, I wouldn't ask anyone to freeze to death outside. Okay, I'll be back in a second. He dashes on to the corridor leading to the residential part. His room, where I assume he's going, is one of the first ones, so it shouldn't take long. Indeed, after a short while, he merges, his, merges back from behind the corner, carrying a thick-looking black jacket in his paws. Here you are. You can hold on to this until you have your stuff back. Oh, thank you, Devon. I put it on over my sweater. It's a bit oversized, but at least it's warm and comfortable. Okay, we can go back now. Devon glances at his watch and looks at the notebook he holds in his other paw. Well, looks like everyone is here already, we can start now. Well, I'm introduce you to Professor Arne Fang, who will give you a crash course in astronomy and stargazing tonight. Oh, thank you, Devon. Hello, everyone. It's nice to meet you all. So you're here because you've signed up for stargazing as your activity for today. You probably expect to start with the telescopes, which you can see over there, but that's not what we're going to do. I understand that some of you might be more advanced in the topic, but we're going to start with the very basics today. We're lucky the wind blew the clouds away, otherwise you wouldn't be able to see much, you would have to postpone the activity. Stars are favourable to us today. He chuckles at his own pun before continuing. 
Uh, Devon, can you go and turn the lights off? Oh, sure thing. Sark gave me some lock first and it might seem uninteresting. It's just looking at the sky, isn't it? Well, in a way it is. It becomes more interesting when you know what you're looking for. The sky is truly a beautiful thing in itself, but knowing what you're looking at transforms the experience. We'll start our course with the simplest exercise. Look at the sky and try to locate the Ursa Major constellation. That's easy. You're only standing right there. Lake points to the bear and whispers to Jürgen, who upon hearing that hides his face in both his paws with a sigh. Uh, thank you, Devon. So, now can you find the Ursa Major by yourself? I look up the sky, but I have no idea what to look for. If you heard about that consolation, at first glance it's hard to recognise anything even a bit Earth sign looking. If you found it, please raise your paw. Glancing around, I see a few paws already in the air. I myself have no idea what to look for, though. Okay, so now how to find that constellation in the sky? When you look at Ursa Major, in its tail you'll surely notice a familiar shape. You may know this group of stars as Karls Vognen, the Charles Wagon, or the Plough. Oh, how? Hey, that's Big Dipper for you, Devon. Ah, oh, sorry. British English sometimes still confuses me. Oh, that makes it much easier. I think everyone has at least once in their life found the plough in the sky. Only, unlike in the city, the sky here is filled with a multitude of stars. How am I supposed to find anything among so many? Counterintuitively, you may find that locating specific stars is harder here because how many stars are visible? Focus on the brightest ones and ignore all the small ones. I think I see it. Looking only for the brightest stars, I finally locate the familiar shape and raise my paw. Now, why is this important at all? The Cat Constellation is the third biggest one in the night sky and certainly one of the most well known. It's extremely useful in navigation in the northern hemisphere of our planet. Even Homer in the Odyssey mentions Ursa Major as the constellation that never disappears from the sky and stayed bathed in the ocean waves. If we draw a line going through them, the last two stars of the bowl point her straight toward Polaris. Now, who can tell me why that is important? The Polaris is the North Star. It's roughly above the North Pole and so it's the point around which the whole sky rotates. That's right, thank you, Jürgen. What you might not know is Polaris is actually a three-star system, composed of a primary star with two small companions, but that's a story for a different lesson. If anyone here is interested in night sky photography and doesn't have the money for expensive equipment, then you could take some nice photos know where Polaris is. With long exposure, you get these beautiful star trails circling around the North Star. Oh, I like this guy already. Let's share my for classics with him. Oh, physics professor is probably the grumpiest old man I've ever seen. Oh, he's really nice. Many joke about Uranus gets you thrown out of his class. Oh, Lake knows something about that. Oh, Lake, I thought that you were a polite boy in there gets into trouble. Oh, I don't know where you got that idea. Yeah, I can attest it's completely untrue. So, it looks like everyone's able to locate the Ursa Major. That's great. For the next exercise, let's spice things up a little bit. This time you'll be using telescopes. You'll take a closer look at Saturn through them. That is, if you manage to locate it. I will make it easy for you, though, because these are supposed to be fun activities after all. You're instructed to download a Sky Map app to your phones before the arrival. I hope you all did that. Oh, that damn. If not, then do that quickly before we get to the next step. Devon, you can go too. Have some fun as well. Oh, if I can, then sure thing. Okay, so we don't have quite enough telescopes to all of you. For the purpose of this exercise, you may form pairs or triples, whatever configurations you might fancy. I don't mind. So now please step up to the telescopes. I believe you can sort into bigger groups when needed yourself. Doing as Professor Arnest said, I walk up to a free telescope at the end of the terrace. Looking around, see all my friends ready eyes at their telescopes or paired up with someone else. Even Miko is walking towards along alongside Bjorn. Okay, so everyone in every group have their own telescope. Good, so now we can start. Named after the Roman god of time, Saturn is a good object for observation for beginners. It's relatively easy to locate and, I might say, fairly spectacular because of its rings. From my own observations, I can tell you that my students prefer to look at planets rather than stars. Well, we have a bit of a closer relation with them after all. You can't help but start to imagine what it might look like for even closer. Who knows, maybe one of you will find some alien structures on one of the planets someday. But for now, look for an object with a golden colour shining steadily, just a tad bigger than the other ones around it. 
first you'll need to locate it with your own eyes before finding it through a telescope. The mobile map you have on your phones will be very helpful. An object with a golden colour, shining steadily, just a tad bigger than the other ones around it. Easier to say, hard to find. I start up the sky map, hoping it will help. I have absolutely no idea how to use it. I'm sure I had a manual or something for the lesson. I look around in desperation. Maybe better off joining someone else after all. Also, it's already the end of the day and I still haven't asked anyone about sharing the room for tonight. I think it's finally the time to make that decision. This might be the best moment for that. So, who am I going to ask? Place your bets, please. Place your bets who we're going to go with. I think some of you might have guessed already. Okay, everyone made their guess. Bjorn. Even though I don't know this guy well yet, I've grown to like him a lot. He's fun to be around, even though he didn't look like it at first. He's quite laid back and chill. Or he said I'm free to stay in his room. I look around, searching for him. He's not far off from me, standing near one of the telescopes with Miko and Travis. It's quick to make friends too. I'm also glad that Miko is someone else to hang out with. I was a bit afraid he'd have problems meeting new people here. Okay. <clears throat> here I go. Oh, Arvo. Hey, what's up? Arvo? Oh, uh, good seeing you again. Hey, thanks. How's the assignment coming along? Well done, but only thanks to Travis. He was experienced with these sort of things, we asked him for a little help, and said he did almost everything himself. I got my own telescope back at home, using this one is no different. Did you finish already, Arvo? Uh, didn't even start, I'm not sure how to use that sky map. Oh, it's easy, it simply shows you the part of the sky you point your phone at. There's a menu on the right you can choose specific planets and stars, and then the map guides you to them. Travis takes out his phone and taps at the screen, launching the app and showing me step by step how to do this. It really does look easy. I'm sure it's more fun doing this with the others. I'm glad I joined them now. Actually, I'd hoped that Miko would try to team up with me and not Bjorn, but then again, it's not like I spent a lot of time with him today. I said Bjorn approached him about that while I went ahead. What is this unpleasant feeling in my throat? Am I jealous of him? Maybe a bit, but he's my long-time friend, so that's understandable. Wow, I had no idea I could be so possessive. I surprise myself every day, just not always positively. Well, that seems easy enough. Well, anyway, we already have the telescope positions. So you can take a look if you want. But if you want to try setting it yourself, I don't want to ruin your fun. Yeah, if you have everything ready, then it's even better. I'll go and do the same with my telescope. You three have fun. Oh, sure thing. Oh, thank you, Travis. See you later. So, go ahead, Arvo. Oh, yeah, right. I lean and look into the telescope. In the middle of the image, there's a rust-coloured orb with a ring around it. It's expected to look like a flat image, but it's very real and three-dimensional. The planet casts a shadow on one side of the rings. There's a thin shadow of the ring on the planet itself, too. It's not too big, but I see it very clearly. Oh. Yeah, that definitely was something. Something with a capital S. I look over the starry sky, dotted with twinkling stars. Saturn is now only a pale dot, tiny and distant. Looks like nothing like the massive planet I saw just a moment ago. It's just one pale dot among many. They're no longer just some shining dots in the familiar night sky. Now they're stars and planets with their moons, even distant galaxies, all of immense sizes and very real. I love looking at the night sky. Actually, I think it's more fun without a telescope. Hmm, I like that too. You're sitting on the grass, looking at the vast space before you, feeling completely free. I enjoy looking for patterns in the stars. Not only familiar constellations, but any shapes I can find. Instruments, dragons, bananas. You have no idea how many bananas there are up there in the stars. 
Or they even found a fl fancy cupboard. It'd be nice if it was summer already. We could lie down together on a hill beside the guest house under the starry sky and just do nothing in particular. What else can we look at? Oh, I see you like that. Mm, I'm not sure myself, though. It's my first time using a telescope. Maybe we could try checking the sky map. There's a list of interesting observable objects there. Maybe it can show us what's visible at the moment. Oh, good idea. Let's try that. Oh, wait. Bjorn? Both Bjorn and Miko look at me surprised. Only now I it maybe it would have been better to wait until I was alone with Bjorn. I know that Miko will find out anyway. But asking Bjorn to let me stay in his room while Miko is standing next to us feels just... wrong. If I were in his place, that would have made me sad for sure. Oh, yes? Uh, can you stay here with me for a moment after we're done? There's something I wanted to talk about. Well, no problem. Miko looks as quizzically but doesn't say anything. Phew. So anyway, how about we look for more planets, yeah? Yeah, that was a nice idea. The next several minutes we use a telescope to look at whatever catches our interest. Bjorn turned all these silent, but in his eyes there's pure fascination and a hint of some longing. I haven't seen him turn this reflective yet, but I observed he tends to get more cheerful the more people there are. Miko stays mostly quiet too, but he seems interested nevertheless. The end comes all too soon, just after we located Polaris wanted to take a closer look at it. OK, looks like our time here is up. Thank you all for attending the lesson. Hope you enjoyed it and maybe even gained a new passion. Well, supper is already waiting for me in the cafeteria if you're free to take it with you and eat anywhere you like. Have a good night, everyone. Well, I hope we get to use the telescopes again sometime. This was a lot of fun. There wasn't anything about it in the schedule, but maybe. It would be nice. I enjoyed it, too. If you'd be up for it, I'll let come out here sometime just to watch the sky without any equipment. Sure, that's a nice idea. Well, that could be fun, too. You can count me in. You wanted me to stay for a while, Arvo? Uh, hmm, if you could. Miko eyes us quizzically again, and something tells me he knows what I want to ask Bjorn. It's not going to do anything bad, though. I just don't want Miko to feel rejected. I'll catch you later, then. Uh, yeah, maybe it's supper. Sure thing. Miko walks away, joining the small crowd of students walking back into the guest house, leaving me alone with Bjorn. Near the entrance, he turns back, looking in our direction. I wave him goodbye, and he waves back for disappearing inside the building. Only a few other students stayed behind, talking together or just looking at the stars. So, what did you want to talk about? So, remember when you told me you don't mind sharing your room with me? Sure, the offer still stands. So I can stay there tonight? Just making sure. Oh yes, that's what I mean. Oh, well, that's great. I'm really glad. You know, this is more stressful than I imagined. Bjorn laughs and puts his heavy paw on my shoulder. Oh, no need to be nervous. If you want to ask me something, just ask away. I'm not easily offended. Hang on, feeling warmer inside. I likely blushing a bit, surprised by the gesture. Okay, I'll keep that in mind. How about we go and grab supper now? Or did you have some other plans? Oh, supper sounds nice. I thought about eating out here, though. If you want to eat with Miko and the rest in the cafeteria, then we can meet later in my room. It's a nice evening. I don't feel like going back inside yet. It's cold here, but I can't deny that the views are nice. You know what? That sounds nice. Having some nice food under the stars. The terrace is already almost empty. I doubt anyone will stick around here, so it'd be a nice occasion to sit together with Bjorn and get to know him better. Hmm. How about I go fetch the food, then, and you just wait here? Shouldn't take too long. Oh, if you'd be so nice, yeah. Okay, I'll be back in a minute then. I'm left alone here. Well, not completely alone. The last group of students just gather their belongings and are walking back to the guest house. I'm glad Devon lent me his jacket, I thought I'd be freezing here. And knowing me, I wouldn't have asked any of them to spare one. Do I have problems with asking for help? Asking about the room was really hard for me, and I got pretty nervous. And I only did it now at the very end of the day when I couldn't wait any longer. Hmm. I never really thought about it. 
you don't have to worry about finding the room anymore. I'm glad I decided to ask Bjorn. He's a cool guy and I feel at ease with him. Despite the rough exterior, he's actually quite friendly. It really is a pleasant evening. Thankfully not too windy, so staying outside isn't that bad. Some grey clouds approach from the horizon. Maybe it'll snow some more tonight. Bravo. I jump a bit scared. Uh, Devon? What are you doing here? Oh, I have to move all the telescopes back to the guest house. Leaving them out here overnight isn't a great idea. What are you doing here, though? Several have already been served. You should go to the cafeteria unless you want to eat alone. Oh, you all want to grab some food for both of us. He wanted to eat outside. So you're staying with him tonight? Yeah, he's kind enough to let me stay in his room. Oh, great. He's a good student. I'm glad to see you two get along well. Okay, going back to work. There's a lot of telescopes left. I'd like to get some food, too. You don't have fun. I'll finish this quickly and I won't bother you. You're not bothering us one bit, coach. You all walks across the terrace, carrying a plate in each paw. Do you need some help with those? He gestures at the seven telescopes still standing on the terrace. Oh, thanks. I'll be fine. You to enjoy your meal. I'll deal with this quickly. Well, thank you, coach. Devon walks away, grabs one of the telescopes and returns to the guest house. Oh, here you go. Yorn passes me a plate with two sandwiches with cheese and a slice of cake. Thanks, that looks good. Two rye bread sandwiches topped with a slice of some dark cheese and sprinkled with pepper. Simple, but looks so good. Especially considering I'm already pretty hungry. The slice of apple cake is deliciously browned on the edges and smells faintly of cardamom and cinnamon. Sorry I took so long. I met Travis in the cafeteria and we chatted for a bit. Oh, it's only a moment. It's so nice out here anyway. Yeah, it's a beautiful night. I always sit on the edge of the terrace so we don't get in Devon's way and have a better view of the scenery. Hmm, good idea. The wooden terrace is cold and covered with snow, but it's nothing I can't take. I sit on the edge of the coat I'm wearing to have some additional insulation and put the plate on my knees. Oh, I've been waiting for this. Bjorn eyes his food hungry for grabbing the sandwich and biting into it. I can tell he had to stop himself from eating anything on the way. Oh, this is nice. Following his example, I grab a sandwich and take a tasting bite. What is this taste? This definitely isn't cheese. It's sweet, but savoury and salty too. Kind of nutty, but has an aftertaste similar to caramel. Hmm? Oh, what's up? Oh, you never had Brunost before? Well, no. Oh, always the first time for everything. And how do you like it? How do I say this without hurting his Norwegian pride? Well, I don't think I'm a fan, but maybe that's because I expected the taste of cheese, and that's something very different. Well, it is different for sure. You'll get used to it in no time, though. He gets back to eating with a smile on his face. I really envy his enthusiasm for this meal, but I continue eating my sandwich too. A stronger gust of wind makes me shiver a bit. Bjorn notices that and moves closer to me, his side pressing against mine. It doesn't help much with the cold, at least he shields me from the wind. And I can lean against him, which is nice. Oh, it's too cold for you. We can move inside and finish eating in the cafeteria. No, don't worry. Oh, it's nice here, and if Frostbite is the price I have to pay for it, so be it. Back in the cafeteria, I couldn't lean against him like this, and I don't want it to end too quickly. Oh, by the way, why well, I get the feeling you didn't want Miko to hear you ask me about the room? Do you want me to keep silent about that? Because that's not going to work unless you want to lie, and I'd rather not lie. Oh, no, I don't want you to lie. I know it'd have hurt Miko's feelings if I asked you in front of him, that's all. You'll find out sooner or later, so it's better if you message him now. You're right. It's better if he hears it from me. I take out my phone and type out a message quickly. Well, as quick as I can with cold pause. Hi, I'm staying in Bjorn's room tonight. Hope you have a good night and I'll see you tomorrow. I send the message and put the phone back in my pocket. If Miko replies, I'll read the message later. Bjorn is almost done with his food while I finish my sandwiches and grab the cake. 
I inspected suspiciously for taking a bite. The sweet and tart flavour of ripe apples fills my mouth. Oh, it really is good. The crust is perfectly baked and crumbles easily, and the hint of cinnamon enhances the flavour. It's really well balanced, with nothing overpowering the rich taste of apples. Mmm, this is nice. Oh yeah, they outdid themselves with the cake. Too bad we only got one small slice each. Oh, well I give us some more right now. Get a bit glutton, but just this time I have to agree. Bjorn laughs loudly, his whole body reverberating with the sound. <laughs> oh, look who's talking. I bet you ate at least as much as me today. This was simply a compliment to the chef. The cake was really good. Hey, you're cool, you know. Instead of responding, Bjorn looks up at the sky. Thanks. This camp is far more intense than I expected. Not that I'm complaining, I'm really liking it here. A lot has happened today. Finishing the day with stargazing was really nice. Yeah, I didn't expect much, but I was positively surprised. Saturn looked so cool through the telescope. I was just a kilometre away and I could reach it by flying a balloon. Yorn lies down on the terrace looking up and I do the same next to him. Imagine how cool it would be to visit another planet someday. Which one would you like to see the most? Well, not a planet, but I'd like to see Europa. That moon of Jupiter. Mm. Have you seen any photos of it? It looks totally crazy, like a silver orb with deep, rusty cuts. No spacecraft has landed on it yet. Supposedly it's one of the only places in the solar system where life could potentially exist. Are we never send a spacecraft there? No, never. That's a massive and costly endeavour, though. We don't yet know it's even possible. The surface might not be suitable for landing. Hopefully one day. Still, it'll be a while for anyone lands there. His voice is brimming with excitement and fascination. You sound quite interested in that. Then you think of studying astrophysics? Bjorn pushes himself to an upright position. There's a weird look in his eye and he hesitates for a moment for answering. No, that's not even a hobby for me. I just like thinking about it. Exploration of space is fascinating. I like letting my imagination run wild about what we might find out there. I'd have to finish neuroscience first to start studying anything else too, when I barely passed it last year. Really? I'll show you at the top of the class. Oh, I wish. I would have a lot of work into studying, but this is really hard for me. I don't know if I'm the best suited for this, frankly. What made you choose neuroscience then? Oh, I suppose I study medicine, but I didn't get it in two years in a row. Neuroscience was still related, so I tried that. But still too hard? Oh, I don't know if I'm cut out for it. Each next year is hard, and I'm already repeating one. I put so much time and work into it, but I still suck. I have no idea what I do after I graduate. If I graduate. You don't sound like you enjoy this. Well, that's because I don't. Why are you putting yourself through this, then? I don't really have a choice. I'd rather talk about something else now, if you don't mind. So, maybe you'll tell me what made you choose cognitive science. Do you think less of me if my answer turns out to be silly? Probably. Maybe a bit. So, back when I was in primary school, I had a dream in which I died, but I remained conscious. As you can imagine, it's a pretty horrible nightmare. So bad that I remembered it all after I woke up my brain started to fixate on it. I do have a serious fear that I could remain conscious after death and have to spend an eternity rotting in a grave. That fear remained with me for a long time, in a closed box or in the dark corner of my mind. When we started biology classes in middle school, I started to read about consciousness. Turned out that we don't know much about it, the speed about its nature spans from philosophy to neurobiology. The whole thing seems so fascinating. Our consciousness is literally us, but we still don't really know what it is or how it works. So to satisfy my curiosity, I chose the studies that are closest to the topic. Well, that makes sense. Suddenly a cat wearing black clothes walks out of the guest house and jumps off the terrace. Wait, is that Klaus?
I watched him casually walk off into the woods, disappearing between the trees. Oh, that was weird. Did you see that? That guy's a bit weird, yeah. I hope he won't catch a cold. But what might he be up to at this hour? No idea. I don't even want to know. Do you think we should report that to Devon? No, uh, what could happen to him around here? Maybe you're right. Still, I have a bad feeling about this. Should we head back already? Mm -hmm. It is getting quite late. Okay, so I have some plans for today, so let's go back inside. Plans for today? What do you want to do at this hour? Well, I guess I'll find out soon. We both stand up and shake off the snow from our clothes and fur. With our plates in poor, we turn to the guest house and leave the cold October night behind. Okay, here we are. Yorn unlocks the door and moves aside, letting me in first. His room looks different from the others I've seen in his guest house, with two beds standing against the back wall, and a table standing between them, likely moved there by the bear. Oh, just stand like that. Make yourself at home. You can drop your stuff wherever. I didn't expect any guests today, so it's messy in here anyway. Sorry for that. Some clothes are scattered all over one of the beds, and two empty plastic bottles lie on the floor under the table. Honestly, it's not that bad. Not worse than my dorm room, that's for sure. But maybe I should mention that to him. Okay, thanks. I don't have much with me anyway. But I'll be back in a moment. Just gotta take a leak. I take off my coat and put it away on the hanger next to the entrance, then look around the room. There's a laptop on the table and a few books stand on one of the bedside cabinets. I can't see the titles from here, but all the books all seem rather short. I wonder where he lives. I haven't asked if he has a room in the dorm or if he rents something. It'd be cool if he turned out he lives in the same dorm as me. I don't think I've ever seen him there, but then I didn't know him before the camp. We used to walk through the same corridors for the last three months, passing each other every day. I put away my camera bag on the table and sit on the empty bed. It smells a bit like Bjorn already, so you must have spent some time on it already, likely watching some on the laptop or reading books. Not that it's a bad thing, he has a pleasant scent. Sitting on his bed feels a bit like leaning on him. I sprawled on it, I could imagine he's hugging me. But that would be a bit creepy, so I don't. I hope you're not tired yet, Arvo. Maybe a bit, so why'd you ask? Well, I just thought we could still do something together. If you want to go to sleep already, that's fine. I'll grab a book and read for a while. I might be a bit tired of the whole day, but I'm definitely interested in what Bjorn has in mind. What are you thinking of? How about watching an anime together? An anime? Oh, come on, don't tell me you don't like them. I don't really know. I don't have a strong opinion. A friend of mine tried showing me a few back in high school, but they were really trashy. Oh, I have someone to convert. I don't know just what to play then. This one is good, trust me. Aren't they, like, really long, though? A season with ten episodes would probably take five hours. Well, this one's a film, so it's around an hour and a half. Okay, then we can try. Don't be mad at me if I don't like it, though. Oh, just a tiny bit. Okay, so what's it called? I'm pretty sure you've never heard of it. I don't want to spoil anything. Hmm. Can I go and take a quick shower first, though? Sure thing, you'll find a fresh towel inside. Mine is the one on the radiator. Do you need anything else? I got a bathroom kit from the receptionist, so I have everything I need, thanks. Have fun, then. Carrying the bathroom kit with me, I enter the bathroom. Time to commence the evening maintenance. I first brush my teeth, paying special attention to my long canines. I'm glad they had a kit with a toothbrush designed for fidelity. These bigger and wider universal ones are sometimes painful to use. Then I dress myself down to the boxers, put on my clothes on the toilet lid, first making sure that it's clean, and look at myself in the mirror. Anyway, huh? Not really my thing, but it's good to stay open-minded. It'll be the third one I'm trying. Third time lucky? I hope so. It'd be a shame to waste the evening on something I won't enjoy. I'll give it half an hour and just tell him if I don't like it or just start talking with him instead. 
I lean in and inspect my face. Looks the same as always. Just more tired. Uh, I've got to ask him where he lives. I have to remember to do it after I'm done in here. I've been really scatterbrained today. Likely because I didn't sleep much, and sleeping on a bus is different to a proper rest in a comfortable bed. Thankfully the day is over, so with a bit of luck I won't lose anything else. My phone inside the toilet, for example. I should hurry up, though. Bjorn is waiting for me, and I'm just standing here staring at my reflection and daydreaming. I take off my boxers, letting them fall to the ground. I grab the shampoo and conditioner from the bathroom kit and hop into the shower. The water is warm and pleasant. Wasting no time, I open the shampoo and start rubbing it into my fur, starting with my head. Now that I think of it, I have no idea how old Bjorn is either. It's easy to be around 25. My guess is he just looks older than he actually is. That's probably true. If he was 25, he probably wouldn't be studying anymore. But there's so little about him in general. He didn't talk a lot about himself until last. Maybe he doesn't like to? Anyway, if he's my friend, I like to think he is. I should ask him more about his life. Now that I ran into him today, he's maybe the friendliest person I've met in Norway so far. Well, maybe apart from Lake. That fuzzy goofball could probably befriend anyone. Still, it took some time until he warmed up to me. He was rather shy and reserved at first. Usually Nordic people tend to keep their distance, need a long time for forging any deeper connections. I know I'm like that too, yet Bjorn managed to reduce that distance between us in a single day. He's quite handsome too, which is a nice bonus. And even though he knows I'm into guys, he doesn't mind physical contact. I know some guys would be weirded out by it, I'm glad Bjorn isn't like that. It'd be nice if we could keep in contact after the camp, too. I actually start liking anime, that is. I continue the relaxing ritual until I'm all clean. Then I open the conditioner and apply it generously, brushing it into my wet fur. It's unbranded, but it smells nice. Now I smell nice, too. Finally, I rinse my whole body again and turn off the water. I step out of the shower and dry myself with a fresh towel, which takes some time when you're all covered in thick feline fur. I finished in a few minutes. Less modern technology is these thick, super-absorbing towels, and only now I realise something. I don't have any clean clothes, so I need to put on the same ones I've been wearing all day. Ugh. I wish I'd at least had a fresh pair of boxers. At least I didn't sweat that much today, and I only took one shower, so it could be worse. I checked the t-shirt, but it doesn't really smell of anything yet. Hope you all won't mind my indecency. I put the t-shirts and the boxes on, grab the bathroom kit and my clothes, and leave. And I'm back. Bjorn is already sitting on his bed when I enter the room, with pillows lined up against the walls and makeshift backrest. Oh good, I don't think you got lost there. Or oh, got tangled up in a towel and suffocated. I will not have to inform Devon I have a dead student in my bathroom. I didn't take that long, did I? Oh, 20 minutes, could be worse. Tigers have thick fur. Trying all that isn't a quick task. Oh, not unlike bears. Oh, do you want some snacks or something to the film? Oh, I have some energy drinks too if you want. Thanks, but I'd rather focus on the film. Snacks are always at least a bit distracted. I want to give whatever Bjorn wants to show me a proper chance. Oh, we just had supper. I'm feeling full after that. Oh, come on then, sit down, we can start. Oh, wait, can you turn off the light? Yeah, sure. After dropping my clothes on the other bed, I turn off the light and sit down next to the bear, keeping a small distance from him out of politeness. He starts the film and leans back on the pillows. The logo of the film distributor displays on the screen in complete silence. After that, the title of the movie, in kanji, in some language it seems vaguely familiar. Nocto de la Galaxia Fevojo. Why is there a Spanish translation of the title in Japanese animation? Well, that's not Spanish, it's Esperanto. I'll explain later if I don't forget. Now you can come closer, I don't mind. And I should quiz you about physical contact, but you certainly didn't seem to be earlier. He turns towards me and winks, computer screen reflecting in his eyes. You really had my trousers on, though. Well, your call. Feeling my cheeks getting hot, I move closer to him, pressing up against his side. Meanwhile, the film starts. First a dozing cat, then an aerial shot of some building, slowly zooming in while the teacher explains something to the students. 
Oh, and it's an astronomy class. How fitting. Looks a bit dated. It's for sure much older than all the anime I've seen so far. Pacing seems a bit slow for now, but this is just the beginning. And it's a welcome change after this whole day, and on the move some action-packed spectacle. Thankfully I don't mind slower films, as this one seems to be one. I like having some mental space to process the events and take in the atmosphere. Oh, wow, those cats are cute. It's been a half an hour and not much has happened yet. There's some festival going on, the main character misses most of it running errands for others. It seems like the film tries to put the viewer in a dreamlike state, but I was already pretty tired to begin with, I can feel myself slowly slipping into a real dream. Maybe this just isn't for me, I don't like anime, no matter the quality and genre. I promised myself to give it half an hour, I'd already passed that. We all seem pretty sure he's going to like it, so maybe I shouldn't give up on it so soon. He himself seems to be completely engrossed in the film though, completely focused on the screen. Bjorn? Hmm? He gives me a quick glance before turning back to the screen. Does it get more interesting after a while? Yeah, the start is slow, but it picks up just after this scene. The main character climbs up a hill, running away from the village. All around him while flowers bloom, contrasting with the black sky threatening to swallow everything. A lone bird swoops down from the sky, flying across the slope with a loud cry. The cat makes it to the top and sits down on the grass, looking up at the starry sky, just like me and Bjorn not long ago. It's an incredible feeling, have the whole galaxy in front of you. In the film it looks more like spilled milk than individual stars. Suddenly a neon bright shape descends from the sky straight to the cat, followed by a loud hiss. Whoa, wait, what was that? Ah, oh, just wait. Only gets weirder from here. The ending credits scroll up the screen, but I barely notice them. I get up from the bed and walk towards the window. Arvo? The moon shines brightly above the mountains, painted in otherworldly hues. Everything seems to be flowing, as if the trees were moving in a complicated dance of their own will, not just swaying in the wind. I feel like I'm still out there, floating through the galaxy. The harpsichord still plays in my head, chords bashing over and over again like an earthquake. Have I ever done anything truly good? Some kind of act that would give my life meaning? Is my life alone I have to pay up? It makes you ask questions, doesn't it? I'm more concerned about the answers now, though. Where does one find happiness? Is it worth it to sacrifice yourself for others? What value does life have? There aren't any right answers. You have to find your own by living your life. But it's important to ask the right questions. Who do you live your life for? Who do I live my life for? For myself, obviously. They're also my parents, family, friends. I know I need them, and I couldn't imagine not having them. Or is that all? It is my ambition to become a scientist and do research. In part, satisfy my curiosity, but I want to make some contribution to science. Could this make me happy? Knowing that my work puts something positive into the world, that I helped someone, that I had an impact on others' lives. If there is one answer I could get out of this film, is that being there for others can give my life value. I probably don't need to sacrifice myself for them, but to live only for myself, my own goals would be an empty life. Wow, I had no idea an anime could hit me this hard. This one does things to people, yeah. I had no idea stuff like this existed. All the Western animations I've seen were much more geared towards a younger audience. Not like this could have been played for kids, but... It wasn't afraid to get dark. It didn't shy away from heavy topics. It didn't treat the viewer like an idiot. It didn't shy away from a bittersweet ending that now no Western studio would have the guts to do. Okay, I have to admit, anime can be great. See, I told you. But this is just one film. Quite an old one at that, so I don't yet feel entirely convinced. All the symbolism was a bit much, but the surreal sceneries that you like to look at. It's hard to find works this imaginative lately. You just have to know where to look. Bjorn turns on the light and stretches, groaning. Bjorn? 
Uh, yeah. What am I supposed to do with all these feelings inside me now? I will cherish them. Use them to grow and become a more complete person. I miss having those. As you get older, things just dull a little bit. Nothing has such impact on you anymore. And you don't ask as many questions. You just get used to living in this world. Or if they aren't good feelings. You decide if they're good or not. It's like with a heartbreak. It can crush you if you can't resolve the feelings inside you. But it's also a chance to grow. Often negative experiences and emotions can teach you more than positive ones. And you learn to appreciate them too. This wasn't your first time watching it, was it? Oh, I saw it four years ago. The same year I finished high school. So that would make you 23? Or 24. I had a gap year after I didn't get into med school and I failed a year. 24. Five years older than me, huh? Yet we talk like there's no barrier between us. He feels more serious than most of the people I talk with. Like he carries a heavier baggage, if that makes sense. Oh, before I forget again. I was wondering, where'd you live? Uh, well... Currently I'm living with my parents. I moved back there after I failed a year. I lived in a dorm before that, so I guess it's an upgrade. Whenever I seen him, he always looked composed and confident. So suddenly seeing him get visibly sad almost makes my heart ache. I want to give him a hug, but I don't feel you'd appreciate it. You don't seem very happy with that. Oh, you don't need to state the obvious. I don't have much say in this. I can't work to support myself because my studies take all of my time. I'm glad I have a roof over my head and food on my plate. Oh, by the way, Arvo, uh, something has been bugging me. Hmm? Yeah, what's that? Why me? I mean, why do you want to stay here with me instead of, let's say, with Miko? Miko, it's a bit of a complicated situation, but I don't know if I want to get into it now. Fair. Uh, well... Spending time with you today was fun and, well, I just like you. I didn't see a reason why it shouldn't be you. Do I need a special reason? Well, you tell me. Well, fair enough, though. I'm glad you asked me. It was fun to spend this evening with someone else. A blast is maybe a bit too strong. We just sat and chatted and then watched a film. I had a good time and that's what matters. I don't regret it. I had fun too. Why didn't you take a room with someone else though if you didn't want to be here alone? Oh, I don't mind sitting alone. I'm used to that. But I don't have many friends here. Travis is one, but he wanted to have his own room. I'm sure he'd spend the evening playing some games anyway. I failed a year, and that means all the friends I had already graduated, and after that I didn't make any new ones. Well, it's not easy to fit into a tight-knit group of people who've known each other a few years already, you know. I can imagine. Note to self, never fail a year. I opened my maw wide, yawning. Watching the film really got me sleepy, and that fatigue is finally catching up with me. Oh, I think it's time for me to go to bed. Oh, mind me though. I'm so sleepy. You won't wake me. Up. You won't wake me up for sure. Well, I think I'll go too. It's been a long day. You can turn the light off. I'll go brush my teeth and straight to bed after that. You're not showering. Oh, I shower in the mornings. I often sweat a lot during the night, and I'd rather be fresh and clean in the morning. Showering in the evening is weird. Why well, bother if you're musky again in the morning anyway? I feel you get when you get in the shower after a long day and let the water wash away your fatigue and then get into a clean bed. That's enough of a reason for me. Well, I'm not judging. I'm just saying what works for me. Oh, wait, I need to put all, all the stuff from your bed somewhere else. The bear goes off to clean the bed. In the meantime, I sit down in the chair and take up my phone to see if I've got any messages. Oh, there's one from Lake. Where are you staying tonight? You found a room? Yeah, I'm staying with Bjorn. Oh, cool. I don't think I know who that is. He's eating dinner with us, silly. Oh, him. It's funny because he actually is a bear. Yeah, I know, crazy. Hope you have fun. Thanks, sleep well. And there's one from Miko, too. 
I really want to read it. Well, I have to sometime, don't I? Thanks for telling me. Bjorn seems like a nice guy, so that's great. Hope you had fun today. Phew. I'm glad you take this, didn't take this personally. Thanks a lot. Sleep well tonight. Okay, your bed is ready. I'll be back in a moment. Rather said you can turn the lights off if you want. I nod, too sleepy for a proper reply. Bjorn hesitates for a moment before patting my head. It's a hasty and short pat, but it's a nice gesture anyway. I lean to his huge paw before he takes it away. I can tell he's not used to physical contact, but he enjoys it a lot. He doesn't say anything more, but walks away to the bathroom, closing the door behind him. I get up, turn off the light and collapse onto the bed. Man, this was a tiring day. I've had enough energy to get into the sheets. Apart from the sound of water flowing in the bathroom, it's completely silent here. The scenes from that film we watched today still play in my mind. Two friends on a journey to the heart of things. Lost in the everyday, I forgot how wondrous and strange life is. I'm not sure why, but everything seems so fresh now, like I'm looking at the world for the first time. I'm glad to be able to share my life with all of my friends. That they're here with me in this strange world and we can experience it together. And that's enough. Sleep comes faster than expected, even before Bjorn returns. And that's it for the moment for Dawn Chorus. Of course, when the Bjorn updates come out publicly, I'll definitely be recording those. I'll be keeping an eye on things. And also you can find Dawn Chorus on itch.io and if you want to support them on Patreon, all those links are down in the description as per usual. And next Saturday, we'll be going back to Manival Hotel. There's a small section, which I still haven't done, from the end of the previous build. And you may have heard that they brought out a huge build just yesterday. So we'll take a short look at uh, the new stuff next Saturday. I'm not sure how far we'll get into it. But uh, that will be carrying on through the next few months with the videos. We'll come and see what's up with Asteria and the rest of them. And... I don't have much more to say. So before I go, as always, Jochenvauer, Kartek, Kopas Visser, Asuksu, Dissonance, Sindri Dragowolf, Tiger Cub, Grizz, Evan King, David Taylor, The Beholder, Samuto, Ryan Hall, Anubis Silverwind, Ida Corval, Brandon Bradford, Bastian, Lark Huskerton, Marcus, Kopi, and Gunnar Muller my top patrons and thanks also to all the people who support my patron and those of you for actually watching these things which I never expected to end up with this many subscribers and viewers and whatnot back when I started. But I'm glad to know you're all enjoying them. Feel free to comment down below. So that's it. Until next time. Bye for now.